Okay, let's talk about superficial back muscles. And our objective is to identify the following muscles, including names, innervations, and actions, which are trapezius muscles, rhomboid muscles, levator scapulae, and latissimus dorsi muscles. But before we begin, this begs the question, what is the difference between superficial and deep back muscles? To answer this question, let's take a cross section through the shoulder blades and uh, see a cross section of the trunk through the scapulae. And there in yellow are showing the bones, and there is a cross section through the head of the humerus, and there is the scapula or your shoulder blade and there's a thoracic vertebra and then articulating with the rib and the rib because it's at an angle looks like this in cross section and so in red those are all the muscles that make up the back but all these back muscles are actually two different layers of muscles one layer shown in pink is superficial and they attach primarily from the uh, trunk but also to the upper limb like the scapula and the humerus and their function is to support and move the upper limb they're actually upper limb muscles that migrated to the back to support the upper limb. So they're on the back, but they're not really back muscles. Plus, they're innervated by ventral rami branches from spinal nerves, which innervate upper limb muscles, not deep back muscles. So now we see in green, those are the deeper located back muscles, and they're all along the spinous processes, and so they're sometimes called paraspinal muscles for being beside the spine. And they, these deep back muscles support and move the vertebral column. And they're innervated by the dorsal rami branches of the spinal nerves that go to the true deep back muscles or intrinsic back muscles. And so we're going to focus then on the pink muscles, the superficial back muscles, and another lecture will cover the deep back muscles. All right, so the first of the superficial back muscles is the trapezius. It arises from the skull, from the external occipital protuberance, and then all along the midline, like that nuchal ligament along the spinous processes of the cervical vertebrae, and then the spinous processes of C7 down to T12. And then it's going to attach laterally all along the spine of the scapula, going to the lateral point of the shoulder, the acromion. And then if we look from the front, there's the acromion. And then all along that lateral third of the clavicle. There are the attachments of the trapezius. Now look at the fiber orientations. This is what makes the trapezius so unique. From that acromion, look at those muscle fibers course all the way up to the skull so that when, this, when those muscle fibers contract, they pull the scapula up as in shrugging your shoulders. We call that elevation of the scapula. Now look at the middle part of the spine and those um, fiber orientations go more at a horizontal level so that when those muscle fibers contract, they pull the scapula towards the midline in this fashion. We call that adduction of the scapula. And then right at the more of the medial margin of the scapula, those fiber orientations course down so that when these muscle fibers contract, they pull the scapula down in this fashion, which we call depression of the scapula. Usually gravity does that, but against, but if there's against resistance, those are the, that's what the fibers will do. Now let's look at all three of those different fiber orientations together. More medially, those fiber orientations pull the scapula down. More laterally, the fiber orientations pull the scapula up. But if all of those fibers contract at the same time, you get this rotational movement of the scapula that goes along what's called the scapulothoracic rhythm. And so take a look at this. There's an outlined in orange, the trapezius, and then we see those three different orientations. When the muscle contracts, it helps to move and rotate the scapula up, as in reaching above your head. Now, what is the innervation of the trapezius? It's via the spinal accessory nerve or cranial nerve number 11. In this cross acronal section of the uh, posterior skull and cervical vertebrae, right in the middle in orange, there's the vertebral canal. Within the vertebral canal, is the spinal cord, and the spinal cord continues superiorly with the brain stem, specifically the medulla oblongata. The hole in which the spinal cord traverses is called the foramen magnum. So above the foramen magnum is the medulla oblongata, below is the spinal cord. And then at the base of the skull is that jugular foramen. And so let's look at the spinal accessory nerve that arises segmentally from the cervical spinal cord, traverses the foramen magnum, and goes into the skull, then it descends through the jugular foramen along with cranial nerves 9 and 10, and after traversing the jugular foramen, will innervate the trapezius muscle and sternocleidomastoid muscle we'll talk about later. Let's go back to our original picture. So the spinal accessory nerve, after going through the jugular foramen, goes down and innervates the trapezius muscle. All right, now let's 
outline the trapezius muscle and take a scalpel and we're going to now dissect uh, that trapezius muscle out of the way and look deep to it. And there's a levator scapulae. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And so the attachments of the levator scapulae muscle are from the transverse processes of C1 to C4. Then the muscle spirals down to insert at the superior angle of the scapula. The action of this muscle is to pull the scapula up in this fashion to help elevate the scapula, hence the name levator scapulae. All right, elevation of the scapula. I want to take a look at the rhomboid minor. It makes a rhombus shape and it's smaller. And so we zoom in and it arises from the spinous processes of C7 and T1 and then it inserts on the medial margin of the scapula right at the level of the spine, so where you can find it. And then our rhomboid major, rhombus shape, but it's bigger than the minor. Let's zoom in. It arises from the spinous processes of T2 all the way down to T5, and then it's going to insert all along that medial margin of the scapula. So collectively, there's a rhomboid minor in major muscles. When these muscles contract, they draw the scapula towards the midline. We know this as adduction of the scapula. All right, now the innervation, let's take a look at levator scapulae, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. These three muscles, to study what their innervation is, it's through the dorsal scapular nerve that arises from the C5 spinal cord level. Look in the ventral horn gray matter. There's a motor neuron cell body, and its axon goes through the ventral root and ventral ramus all the way down to innervate those three muscles. But then that nerve courses, it's not through space, it has to take a road to get from the spinal cord to those muscles, and that road is called the brachial plexus. It's this whole network of nerves in which these neurons are going to travel. Now the brachial plexus is something we'll cover in more detail in the upper limb, so I'm just introducing that concept for you now. All right, our final muscle is the latissimus dorsi muscle. Latissimus means broad, broadest muscle, dorsus, dorsi, or of the back. And this muscle arises from the T7 all the way down to the sacral region of the vertebral column. And it uh, arises through this thoracal lumbar fascia. Um, and then those muscle fibers course all the way up to the anterior surface of the humerus to the intertubercular groove. And in this anterior view, there is that intertubercular groove between the greater and lesser tubercles of the humerus. And so when this muscle contracts, we see the following actions. So on a posterior view of the body, there's the scapula and there's the humerus. And an outline, there is the latissimus dorsi. When this muscle contracts, it pulls the humerus down in this fashion. And we call this motion adduction of the humerus. It also is going to help move the humerus from a flexed to an extended position from here to here. So we call this extension of the humerus. All right, now what is the innervation of the latissimus dorsi? It's via the thoracodorsal nerve, which arises from the C6, C7, and C8 spinal cord levels. And there's the motor neuron in the ventral horn gray matter. And then notice the axon goes out the ventral root and ventral ramus all the way down from C6 and C7 and C8. And notice that all three levels form wonder twin powers as they go down to innervate the latissimus dorsi. But again, it's not just empty space between the spinal cord and the latissimus dorsi. Uh, they, these motor neuron fibers are laid out. The roads are, is on the branches of the brachial plexus to get there. All you need to know, however, is that the thoracodorsal nerve is what innervates that latissimus dorsi. All right, let's do the superficial back muscles in a nutshell. So the trapezius muscle is going to help elevate, it's going to adduct, and it's going to rotate the scapula. And the trapezius is innervated by the spinal accessory nerve, which is also known as cranial nerve 11. Now the levator scapulae muscle is going to elevate the scapula, whereas the rhomboid minor and major muscles together are going to adduct the scapula, and together these muscles are innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, which arises from the C5 spinal cord level. And finally, our latissimus dorsi muscle is going to adduct and it's going to extend the humerus. Latissimus dorsi is innervated by thoracodorsal nerve, which arises from the C6, 7, and 8 spinal cord levels. And my friends, that is the superficial back muscles in a nutshell.